Since when do you need a book telling you how to feed a baby? Oh, you mean this? Uh, well, yeah, it's about babies, but it's not terribly practical. It happens to be the only book I could find in our vast library that concerned babies. It must be yours. It's oh. a parent-child interaction. Oh. Can't understand a word of it. Well, I think you, uh, you better start interacting with Jamie. Looks like he wants more of that mush. Mush? This is not mush. This oh. happens to be baby cereal, and oh. he loves it. Oh. Well, sometimes. <laughs> you want to try it? I got a better idea. Why don't you try feeding him for a while? Me? Uh, no, no. I know absolutely nothing about feeding babies, and even less about interacting with them. Oh, well, all you have to do is what comes naturally, is what we think. <laughs> well, considering the baby didn't come naturally, so what? I don't think we have to discuss that at this very moment. April, you and I have a lot to say about this situation, and I think we have to talk about it very soon. If we don't, things are just going to... I think we're going to have that little talk right now. I can't be Logan. You told him to come by today. Well, it is a bit early, wouldn't you say? No, April. The sooner we get this straightened out, the better it's going to be for all of us. And I mean all of us. Even him. Don't you worry, Jimmy. Because I'm not going to let anyone take you away from me. No, I'm not. Mm -hmm. Good morning, April. Hi there, Tiger Jim. <laughs> Remember your old dad, do you? Huh? Huh? or something, I could scramble you up some eggs. Oh, mm -hmm. thank you, but I'm fine. I'll tell you, I would like some coffee if you've got any left. Yeah, yeah. yeah honey, I'll get it for you. Would you like me to take over the feeding there? I used to be pretty good at it. Had a lot of practice while Raven was around. No, I, I think actually he's he's had enough. I was thinking I'd maybe put him in the playpen and let him try to break a few more of his toys. Yeah, huh? that's not a bad idea. Especially since we're going to be talking about it. Little pictures have big ears, huh? <laughs> My mother used to say that all the time. I never did know what it meant. Yeah, well, I still don't. Um, I'll be right back. Hmm. Any word from Raven? No, nothing yet. Uh, well, she's been in London for a couple of hours now. Probably sitting with her mother, telling her what a beast I am. Yeah. I still find it hard to believe that she would just leave that way. You mean to walk out on the entire marriage? Believe it, believe it. She wanted to be the one to do the walking out. It's much more dramatic that way, you know? We could jump on a plane, whole ocean between us. Not that that's any different. I... <laughs> There's been an ocean between us for some time now. Is there any chance for a reconciliation? None. This marriage is dead and buried. The only thing left is the last rites, and that's what you and I are going to perform. Oh, you mean a divorce? As quickly as possible and as cleanly as possible. I want everything wrapped up, including Jamie. Yeah. What was that? Did I hear something about Jamie? April, I don't know how to apologize for all the nonsense that went on yesterday. I mean, Raven coming in here with her wild idea about giving away our child. Wait a second, uh, Logan. I'm a little confused. What do you mean, Raven's wild idea? Well, it means that Raven didn't have the right to give away their child to the first person she met on the street corner. Uh, Draper, Raven did no such thing. What she did was turn over the care of her baby to people she knows and trusts. People who have taken care of Jamie, who know him and love him and... April... Uh, I didn't mean to infer, even for a moment, that you and Draper wouldn't make wonderful parents for Jamie or any other child for that matter. It's just that, well, he's already got a parent. And Raven was only doing that to spite me. Now, that's what I've been telling you for all along. Yeah, well, Logan, I think you should take a look at these. What's this? Oh, yeah. Oh, those are the uh, two so-called legal papers giving us. They Jamie. are legal. Oh. Logan, Raven wanted us to keep Jamie, and I think it's rather unfair of you to walk in here like this and take him away from us. Oh. April, I, I'm not doing anything like that. I couldn't take him today even if I wanted to. I got my job to look after and I've got nobody to care for him right now. I have to make provisions. Uh, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We'll settle this right now. Logan, April and I will take care of Jamie for you until you make other arrangements. Wait a second. Now as far as I'm concerned, Raven is the only one who has any legal right to make any decisions as far as Jamie's concerned. My God, concerned. April, listen to yourself. What's gotten into you? Are you telling us that Logan has nothing to say about no, the situation? No, not Then what, what are you saying? Excuse me. How about that? I'm sorry. 
Well, I guess it's not going to do any good to talk about this now, is it? Yeah, I got to get over to the hospital anyway. I was supposed to see that Madison girl this morning. Yeah, I was. Uh, I was going to go over it myself. Did uh, Did you hear what happened to her last night? Yeah, I got most of the story about this bartender who turns out to be Tobias. But I thought I'd go over and get the details firsthand. Yeah. Look, why don't you wait until I get a coat and um, I'll go with you. She uh, still is my client, technically, anyway. Okay, let's go. Logan. <sighs> about Jamie. We'll straighten it out, I promise. Oh, Bill, what a time for him to go away on a vacation. Just when the Tobias case has come to a head. That's quite a story, all right. You're going to have to do a lot of digging to get the facts behind it. Yes, unfortunately, I won't be able to talk to the one person who knows all those facts, Paige Madison. Well, I know one person who will be talking to her. Hmm? Draper's going to the hospital this morning. And frankly, I'm just as glad that I don't have to face him first thing. Oh, you mean because of what Mr. Seward told us about Margot Dorn? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid Seward's theory is probably correct. But Draper's mother-in-law is the one and only reason he didn't get that New York job. Mike, the evidence is very damning. She wanted to keep her daughter in the same town, right here. That's got to be the reason she did it. Not to spite Draper, but just to make sure that her daughter didn't leave. Honey, that was a very cruel, ruthless thing for her to do. She should be ashamed of herself. Oh, yes, she should. But, Nancy, I still don't think we should get involved in this. It's not our place to let the cat out of the bag. I know, I know, but even if you may be right, motherly love is no justification for doing what she did. Honey, I just wish the whole truth would come out. Of course, uh, Seward isn't 100% sure of the truth. David Hansen didn't actually say that Margot told him to reject Draper. Seward still has to check that out. It's a foregone conclusion. Hmm. If Draper knew... Nancy, he... if Draper knew, he'd be unhappier than he is right now. Yes, that's true. Well, I'm off to headquarters to find out what the police know about Mr. Tobias. Well, one thing they do know, hmm? a dead man can't be much of a threat to Paige Madison. Yeah. She must be a very relieved young lady right now. Good morning, Paige. These ought to cheer you up. They're from your brother. Well, I would say that you are coming along just fine, Paige. But uh, if I were you, from now on, I'd make sure that those pilot lights are working before you do any more cooking with gas. I wasn't the one who blew out the pilot lights, Doctor. It was someone who was supposedly a friend of mine. Is it all right to come in? Come right ahead, Mr. Madison. How's she doing, Doctor? Is she all right? She's doing just fine. Paige, see you later. Well, don't eat them all at once, okay? Oh, well, Daddy. Honey. Oh, oh, God, it was, it was so awful. Oh, come on, Paige. I know, it's all over, though. No one's going to hurt you. There's no more Tobias to worry about, okay? I hmm? thought he was my friend. I thought he was trying to stop those assassins, but he was the one who was sending them. He wasn't interested in helping anybody. He was interested in the money. It's all he cared about, just the money. I know, I know. Now, come on, don't cry. Come on, Paige. There's no reason to cry anymore. Oh, honey, you're safe. Tobias is dead. Come on. Well, what is it, Paige? God, you know what it is. It's Brian. Brian? Well, Brian told me why I was running away in the first place. Well, running away? Is that what you were doing? Is that why you went off to see Tobias? Tobias was the only friend I thought I had in the world. Oh, come on, Paige, and that's just nonsense. Well, I couldn't stay in that house another minute longer. Now that, now that I... When I knew why Brian left three years ago, I mean, I really understood why he ran away. Never wanted him to tell you that. I begged him not to tell you the truth. Paige, I just couldn't see that any good would possibly come of it. Daddy, you told him. You told him that he could only love me as his sister, because that's what I was. I was really his sister. Honey, none of us thought... I mean, we just never thought that it would ever come to that. My God, you were just kids. 
They were just kids who used to play checkers. We used to run around in the backyard screaming like crazy Indians. And you never considered that we might grow up to play house, Daddy? No, I guess I just never thought you'd grow up at all. You know, a father never does until one day, I don't know, it just hits you over the head like a hammer and you realize that there's a woman in the house instead of the little girl that, that used to be there. Why didn't you tell me, Daddy? Long ago. Long before I started loving Brian the way I do. I don't know why. I was wrong, okay? I was wrong not, not just to keep it a secret, but to have created the situation in the first place. And Brian told me you said you were guilty. Does that make you feel better? No, it doesn't. I know that saying that I was wrong doesn't excuse what I did. Well, what about Nola? Nola had something to do with this too, didn't she? Oh, come you? on, Paige, that was years ago. I mean, I didn't even, I didn't even know when I felt like that. I thought I was living life at a hundred miles an hour. Nothing seemed enough. Grabbed at every sensation, every, every emotion, all the so-called pleasures in life. Of course, they didn't prove to be very worthwhile, you know. You don't expect me to feel sorry for you, do you? No, I don't. Because I did what I wanted to do. Of course, I didn't want Nola to, to become pregnant. That was a terrible mistake. But of course, no matter how unhappy my relationship was with your, with your mother, it was a marriage, and I wanted it to continue. But it didn't continue. You divorced my mother. Yes, that's right. That's right. Anola herself was divorced, so we got together. <laughs> but the family was united. My first child and my, my second child, together. But honestly, Paige, never in a million years did I ever think think that anything like this would happen. Well, that's it, you know. It, it, it's just over. Fine. I'll just learn to forget about Brian the way he learned to forget about me, right? Hey, I'll uh, run off and join the Navy, too. They take women now, so fine. Come on now, Paige. Now, don't do anything silly. I don't want you to leave. Oh, honey, I need you. Well, I have needs, too, Daddy. I know that. But there'll be somebody else. <laughs> That's one thing I do know, Paige. Really, listen to me. When there's a need, there's always somebody else. Good morning. So you didn't know Tobias was in town until you saw him at the Unicorn? No, I didn't. When I saw him buying that bar, I was completely flabbergasted. And he didn't tell you that he'd been in town for a while? Well, I knew. But you didn't know until Elliot Dorn called you at your home to talk about your stepmother. I'm sorry, Owen, but that was the reason you went down to the Unicorn, wasn't it? Because Mrs. Madison wasn't feeling well? Uh, Deborah, will that have to be made public? No, I don't see why it's important. What I want to know is why... Tobias didn't get in touch with you before, if he was supposed to be such a good friend of yours. Well, I think we know the answer to that one. He was no friend at all. He was our worst enemy. Good morning, oh. everybody. Mr. Good morning. Madison. Mr. Madison. Oh, oh, right. Paige. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm fine. Absolutely nobody can kill me. All the experts <laughs> have tried. <laughs> well, Ms. Madison, it now appears that your friend Tobias was the man behind all those experts. Is that your opinion now, too? That was going to be my next question. Oh. Pardon me, Officer Saxon, it's your case, you have the floor. I didn't think there was anything wrong with Toby at all till the night I went to his place. Why'd you go there? I just went there, that's all. I got a call from him uh, that he was thinking of leaving town and it would be the last time I would see him. Okay, so you went to Nikki Dial's, Tobias's apartment, then what happened? I saw something I wasn't supposed to see. Something in a cheap little suitcase. <laughs> a million dollars in a cheap cardboard suitcase. A million dollars? In cash? Yes, in cash. I think it's pretty obvious where the money came from. Sure, from those South American rebels. The people he sold those defective guns to. Yeah, but you told us before that there were no financial arrangements. I 
that's what Tobias told me. They told me we were just doing it for the sake of helping. But he lied. He lied to me. He said it for the money. That guy wore a mask all the time, didn't he? Yeah, that's true. He, he did. Always. I'm sure those guns were defective, too, and he knew it, and I didn't care. Just for the money. Paige, is it possible that Mr. Tobias wanted the plan to fail, that he wanted the entire gang to get cut? It might be, Draper. I don't know. Makes sense to me. Double-crossed them the same way he double-crossed you. Sure, the more gang members that he got rid of, the more there was for him, right? He had a list of the gang members in his apartment. This list? I found it the other day. It's a list of all the assassins who attacked you. Now, your name is at the bottom of this with a question mark. Do you have any idea why it's there? I uh, think he uh, di didn't know whether I had to die or not. Um, he wanted me to go away with him. And would you have? I couldn't. Not after I saw what was in the suitcase. I found out that he lied to me, found out what he really was, and that was when he decided he'd try to kill me. Look, I think we've had enough for today. I think maybe Paige should rest, okay? I, I, I agree. Just one more thing. Logan, why don't you tell Paige and Mr. Madison what you told me on the uh, trip down here? All right, I think that might be a good idea. Ms. Madison, your immunity is no longer temporary. My office is dropping all charges against you permanently. Case closed. Oh, that's just wonderful. That's... <laughs> Counselor, let's you and me get out of here. Okay, Paige, take care of yourself. Mr. Madison? Thank you. You bet. Bye now. Uh, Deborah, can I uh, buy you a cup of coffee? Um, thank you. I think I better get back to my office and type up my report. Honey, see you later. You know, Logan, I really appreciate you telling Paige that it's going to help her recover, believe me. Perfectly all right. <laughs> and Logan, uh, about our other business, we'll talk about that, okay? Soon, the three of us, you, me, and April. All right, Mrs. Stern, I'll file that petition for preference, but uh, we'll just have to hope for the best. Oh, yes, I'll let you know. Thanks for calling. Goodbye. Yes, Anna? See me? Hmm, sure. Ask her to come in. It's nice to see you. It's nice to see you, too. You haven't been in this office for months. No. But uh, if you're looking for Draper... No, 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 I know. Draper is at the hospital visiting Paige Madison, which is why I thought it might be a good time to come and talk to you. Oh? Want some uh, advice about Christmas presents for mm, your husband? No, not quite. But that's pretty close. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have received a present, a very wonderful present, and, well, I would just like to know whether we can keep it. Mike, what do you think? Are they legal? What's legal isn't always easy to define, April. Yeah, but a mother does have the right to uh, choose a legal guardian for her child, doesn't she? Well, normally a guardian is appointed by the court or named in a will. Are you, uh, are you saying that if the parents are still living that uh, a guardian can't be chosen? Of course they can, if the court decides it's best for the child. I see. Are you telling me that I have to go to court? Not necessarily. Not unless uh, the issue is being contested by someone or unless there is some reason to uh, question your competency. Mike, please tell me. Can anyone take Jamie away from me? April, what about his father? Oh, Logan? Logan isn't Jamie's legal father. Jamie is Logan's son only because he was married to Raven. Now, Raven and Logan's marriage has broken up. She has taken off for Europe. And the way she was talking, she plans on staying there. Of course, that might just be talk. Raven doesn't want Jamie. Raven never wanted Jamie. That's why she left him with me so often. Mike, I've been more of a mother to that baby than she ever April, was. I don't question that. But what about Logan? What about Logan? Why should he have any more legal rights than I have? 
April, to be completely honest, I uh, know more about this situation than you might know. You see, Draper's given me Draper, some... Draper's upset because Logan is his friend. Draper should be a little more interested in me. I'm his wife. Mike Logan can have all the children he wants, and I can't. Oh. Uh, look, I know that has, that has no bearing on this situation, absolutely none at all. April, are you telling me that you intend to keep Jamie, no matter what? Yes, I do. Mike, Logan can take me to court. But Raven is Jamie's mother. And it's wrong to go against her wishes, and she wants Jamie with me. So no matter what Logan does, or no matter what Draper says, I'm not going to give Jamie up. so late, it really couldn't be helpful. It's all right. Everything quiet on the home front? Uh, well, more or less, I have Jamie with a neighbor. Oh, well, I'm glad you're finally here because everything has been far from quiet on the news front. Margo, I, I wonder, do you have a minute? Could we, could we talk? No, could you make it about 30 seconds? Uh, I mean it. Oh, Donna, what's the matter? Something wrong? Well, it, it has to do with Jamie. Raven has left her husband and taken off for London. What? Yeah, well, the most important detail of this whole story is that last night, Raven made a visit to our house and gave us her baby. She gave you the baby? Oh, my yeah, goodness, well, what an expression. Okay, well, what I mean is, is that she left the baby here for good. Well, what about her husband? Well, she, um, obviously doesn't want Logan to have the baby. You know, Jamie is her child and the legal father is kevin jameson who is dead and the only legal claim logan has to jamie is that he's married to raven well darling are you sure this is permanent or or just maybe a, a bad quarrel oh no it's permanent i mean they're talking divorce that's not the only thing that was permanent though raven made it perfectly clear that she wanted me to take jamie permanently she even brought over some legal papers in case there were any questions Oh, but wait a minute. Are you telling me that you have just become a mother? <laughs> yeah. Well, darling, how, how do you feel about that? How do I feel? I had time to feel. I don't know. <sighs> oh, Margo, I'm... I'm really confused. I don't... I don't know. I, uh... I'm excited. I haven't felt this kind of excitement since I, since I got the job at MON. I thought that was the best thing that happened to me in a long time. But now you have a six-month-old baby to take care of. And... Yeah, and Margo, I just don't know what to do. I love Jamie, and I love my job. Hey, wait, wait, right there. You know what I think you ought to do? I think you ought to take a little time off from this job you love and start taking care of that baby that you love. I really appreciate the offer, but I don't know if, if I take a leave of absence, I realize that that's just going to put a lot more pressure hey, on your shoulders. I don't shoulders. worry about that, darling. I'm sure I'll be able to find someone to fill in. You notice I said fill in and not replace. Thank you. 
because I don't want to lose this job. And I know, give me some time and I'll be able to, you know, mend the, the motherhood and the career Just altogether. stop worrying about everything and do exactly what you think you have to do. Darling, I know right now that you're thinking with your heart. I just hope you'll start thinking with your head. And then what do you mean by that? What I mean by that is the whole idea of Raven Jameson giving you the baby, darling. I don't think she can do that. It is not a cup of Margo, sugar or an old sh I understand that. Raven does not want the baby, her baby. Isn't that ironic? I mean, here's a woman who, who can have a baby, has one and doesn't want it. And here's a woman who wants one and can't have one. Now you have one. Oh, good grief. I just thought of a horrible side effect. What? Do you realize that this makes me a grandmother? Oh, <sighs> Granny Margo. Now watch that stuff. <laughs> hey, darling, uh, before you go making any great plans, I, I really... I think you better get some legal advice. Oh, Margo, you seem to forget that I'm married to a lawyer. My legal advice comes free. Okay. Well, what does Draper think about all this? Hmm? Oh, well, you know how he is. Yeah, I know how he is. All right. Darling, how does he feel about becoming an instant father? Well, he likes Jamie. He likes him a lot. As a matter of fact, Draper was the first one that ever mentioned adoption. What? But you're not adopting Jamie, or are you? Well, we could. <clears throat> you see, along with some of the other papers Raven brought over, she brought over a, uh, an adoption consent agreement. Uh -huh. And we can start legal procedures at any time. That's what Mike said. M Mike Carr? Oh, yeah. Oh, you went, you went to see Mike Carr with Draper? Oh, no, by myself. Oh. Well, well, what does Logan Swift say about all this? Marco, I told you, there's very little Logan can say. He has no legal rights. Well, darling, <sighs> come on, he could make some sort of a fuss, or, or doesn't he want the little baby either? No, he wants the baby. Well, aren't you afraid he might put up some sort of fight? Well, he could try to take us to court. That's what Mike said. But, M Margo, what's better for the baby? Two parents or one single man who works 16 hours a day and can't possibly afford the time and, and energy to take care of the baby? Well, look, I just know how much this means to you, and I don't want you building yourself up for a big disappointment. Margo, I can't have a baby of my own. And I love Jamie. And I know I will make a terrific mother. Yeah, I know you will. I'm not going to let Jamie go. Not for anything in the whole world. In all the time you knew him, there was no indication he had another identity. None whatsoever. I believed him to be Mickey Dial's bartender and nothing else. But knowing the truth now, I, I suppose I'm not totally surprised. Now, why do you say that? Because Mickey always had a hard edge to him. The night here when you foiled the assassination attempt on Paige Madison, his nerves were steady as a rock. I mean, he had absolutely no emotion in overtaking the life of another man. Well, as it turned out, that man was deliberately set up to be killed, so it would mean one less person he'd have to share the money with. <laughs> oh, he certainly fooled us, huh? <laughs> we thought Mickey was a hero. Well, thank you very much. Oh, by the way, <clears throat> the night that uh, Dr. Kavanaugh was kidnapped, do you know that um, you uh, started all that? I did? Uh, oh. Well, Mrs. Kavanaugh told me that uh, she and the Scots were dining here, and they were waiting for the doctor to arrive when he telephoned here and said he was going to be working late. For oh, heaven's sake. Yes, Dr. Kavanaugh did call here, and Mickey overheard the whole conversation. Isn't that strange? Excuse me, Mr. Dorn, but there's somebody here who'd like to see you. Mm. Well, excuse me, Mrs. Carr, a uh, former employee of mine. I understand. Hello, Mr. Dorn, and how are we today? Oh, hello, Sarah. Uh, didn't you uh, get the reference I sent you? I didn't come here for any reference, Mr. Dorn. I came here for a drink. Oh, I'm sorry, but we won't be open for another few hours. Oh, you seem to have made an exception for her. This lady is from the press, Sarah. She doesn't look like a newspaper man to me. We were discussing uh, my bartender and uh, the charges against him. Oh, is that what you were discussing? <laughs> That's not the kind of thing you usually talk about with an attractive woman, Elliot. <laughs> Listen, Ducky, you look like a very nice lady to me. I think you should be warned about your friend here. Sarah! Um, uh, Mr. Doran, thank you very much. I think I have all the information I need for right now. <laughs> Goodbye, Ducky. I just can't turn my back on you for one minute, can I, Elliot? You'd chase anything in a skirt, wouldn't you? Okay, okay, Sarah. What do you want? 
I want to know if you've kept your promise to me. If you've stopped seeing that floozy the district attorney is married to. Well, I told you that was just a casual thing. Two ships passing in the night. Well, the English Armada is here to make sure that the waters don't get too crowded. Well, you'll be very pleased to know, Sarah, that uh, Mrs. Swift has left her husband, her child, country, and me, and gone back to merry old England. Maybe you should follow in her footsteps. Oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? In fact, I wonder if you didn't have a hand in what happened between Mr. and Mrs. Swift. Oh, me? Yes, you. You've been making some very serious threats, my girl. Well, it's a lucky thing for you I didn't go to your wife. If she knew what you'd been doing with the district attorney's wife, the specialty of the house tonight would be your head on a silver platter. No, you wouldn't go to Margot. <laughs> you're too worried about your own head, darling. Don't forget, you're involved in that little burglary caper of ours. Well, I did the next best thing. I told the district attorney a few things he ought to know. You did that? Well, I only did it because I'm so unhappy, Elliot. I see. And if you're unhappy, you have to spread it around. Oh, but she was nothing but a cheap tart, Elliot. You don't have to go with married women. What's wrong with us single types? Excuse me. I have work to do. But, Elliot, I did it for you. I want things to be the way they were between us. You mean when you were my servant and I was your master? <sighs> They were wonderful days at the penthouse, Elliot. When you took all my orders. I still will. I'll do anything you ask. Then do this. Walk out that door. Go to the busiest intersection you can find. And cross the street against the light. Will you do that for me? All right, Ducky. I'll take a walk, all right. Only I know just where I'm going. Well, here you are, Nola. New home of Owen Madison Productions. Yeah, well, it sort of fits my image, doesn't it? A little rundown and dilapidated. <laughs> it's not exactly um, stage 17 at Warner's, <laughs> but I think it's going to be fun shooting here. I don't know. Are you sure they did talkies here, Eddie? Well, it's not the most modern of facilities, but uh, that's why we got it so cheap. Oh, oh, oh. No, but you said you'd be able to turn it into a workable soundstage. At a hell of a lot less money than it would take to make this production in L.A. Oh, well, it's still going to take big bucks to set it up for filming. Money, I might add, that isn't in the budget for Mansion of the Dance. Well, it uh, takes a little money to make a little money, that's what they say. Now, how would you know, Eddie, you never had any money? Well, I will have when I get my percentage from what this is going to gross. You have to do I have to tell you how much it's going to cost to set this place up? Acoustics? No, oh, I still think you ought to reform this track in stereo. You know, you know, we could make those theaters shake. Some of those special effects. Wait, we jar them right out of their seats. I, I knew this was going to happen. We're not even out of pre-production already. The budget skyrocketed. Oh, I think this is a wonderful place to shoot the film. Oh. <laughs> Talk about an atmosphere to shoot a horror movie. Uh, I'm going to have to rent a couple of trailers for dressing rooms. I'm going to get a nice big star for Nola's. Uh, have you any idea how long it'll take before we're ready to, to go before camera? Well, I have to get the production designer from L.A. to come out here and uh, check the place out yeah, before I... renovations. Don't forget these lighting grids. You know, if we can hang lights from what we've got here, we won't have to build scaffolding. Yeah. Well, now, now, take it easy. Eddie, now that lighting equipment hasn't been used for years. <laughs> Don't worry about me, Owen. Nothing can hurt a thick-skinned press agent except a lousy review. <laughs> Let's see if these things work. Hey, how about that? I guess it didn't do so badly by you. Get all this equipment along with the deal? Ah, oh, terrific, Eddie. Seven Klieg lights. And a dolly that they haven't made replacement parts for in about oh, seven years. This <laughs> does bring back memories. <laughs> oh, I can't tell you how wonderful it feels to have a light shining down on me again. Hand me your script, Owen. 
Sure. Lights. <laughs> Camera. Action. <laughs> Prince of eternal darkness, come unto me. Master of foulness, hold out thy hand. Breathe thy tongue of fire upon my face. Scorch my lips with thy searing kiss. Brand my soul with the irons of hell. I accept thee, Lord of evil. My heart yields to thy power. Euphus, Metahim, Frugativi, et Apalavi. Thus I evoke thee, Satan. No, are you, are you all right? Huh? I, I, I'm fine. Oh. Oh. Talk about ending a scene with a bang. Oh, why? I must have frayed and blown that bulb out. No big deal, though. Oh, Eddie, I warned you about that equipment. It's lucky that none of us were any closer. We could have gotten badly cut. Well, the only thing damaged is going to be your wallet. We're going to have to get an electrician in here to go over all this wiring. Oh. Oh, perhaps uh, Hester didn't care for my reading. Oh, the devil. Oh, come on. It was just a bulb that blew. That's all that happened. What's the matter with you two? Uh, right on time, though. <laughs> yes, too much on time. I nearly jumped out of my skin. <laughs> you, you don't suppose this is a, a genuine curse, do you? Oh, come on. Nola, there's no such thing as a curse. Uh, well, you know what I mean. I wonder if the man who wrote the screenplay just made it up, or uh, if it came from some ancient writings? Oh, I think it probably just came from Hester's original manuscript. Oh. <laughs> no wonder she couldn't get it published. I mean, who'd want to read things like this? Uh, Euphus and uh, Metahim, uh, Fruga, Fruga TV. What kind of a language is that? It's hokum, that's what it is. It's the oldest language in the world. Oh, well, I just hope it wasn't old Hester trying to stop us from shooting. <laughs> you know, maybe we ought to change these spells in the screenplay, just in case. Yeah, look, all I want to do right now is just get out of here and get over to the hospital. Oh, Paige is coming out today, huh? Yes, uh, darling, Brian said he'd take her home. Yeah. I want to be there, too. Uh, but we just arrived, Owen. I wanted to spend a little time here. Oh, all right. I suppose Paige comes first, as usual. Tell Mr. Green that I expect to have that list of prospective witnesses in my office by the end of the week. Yeah. That's right. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Sorry, Mike. Uh, what can I do for you, Draper? Well, I just wanted to let you know that I got a call from Bill Marceau a couple of minutes ago. The Page Madison case, officially closed. Well, thank goodness the charges have been dropped. I guess Miss Madison must be feeling pretty good, knowing that she has nothing else to worry about. That's for sure. Look, Mike, I'll talk to you later. I have to run. Uh, Draper. Uh, just a second. Uh, would you close the door, please? Sure. Earlier today, I had an interesting uh, consultation with a prospective client, but I don't think I'm the proper attorney to handle this matter. Oh. Well, something you could refer to me? No, I'm afraid both of us are uh, too close to the situation. Huh? Draper, I had a meeting with April this morning. April? What was April doing here? She talked to me about obtaining legal custody of Jamie. Pete's sake. She wanted to know if those papers Raven had presented to you were legal. Legal? Mike, do you know what those legal documents were? I mean, one was a letter from Raven saying we could raise Jamie. The other was the adoption paper. I told her that in and of itself, that letter wasn't legally recognizable as permission for custody. That's good, Mike. But that it could be used in a court of law in her favor to be appointed legal guardian. Legal guardian? Mike, I told you, Logan is Jamie's natural father. Yes, and if that fact were proven in the court of law, that would put a different light on this matter. Then Logan would stand a very good chance of winning custody. Now what's all this, this nonsense about winning or losing? Mike, I'm not going into court over this. 
then you better make that very clear to your wife. Well, I told April that we'll take care of Jamie until Logan makes other arrangements. But, Mike, I I'm not going to fight a man over his own son. Draper, you realize how deeply April loves that child. Yeah, I know, Mike. Jamie is the son that we're never going to have. I got the impression that she's going to be very tenacious about trying to keep Jamie. Yeah. Well, obviously, I'm going to have to have a little talk with April. Draper, be prepared. Your toughest battle is not going to be with Logan, but with your own wife. All right, my darling, your leave of absence begins immediately. Margo, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your kindness. <laughs> well, I'm a very kind person. Oh, <laughs> thank you, darling. Yes, Linda? Who? Oh, Sarah Albright? Oh, yes, of course, I know her. She's my ex-maid. What on earth does she want with me? Thank you, and I'll talk to you right. soon. Oh, okay. Sarah. Oh, hello, Mrs. Scott. Sarah. Oh, yes, of course, you two have met before. More than once. It's so nice to see you again. Yeah, I'm sure. Bye, Margo. Bye, Bye darling. Linda. Oh, Sarah. Good Good day. Day. My goodness, this is a surprise. Yes, it has been a while, Mrs. Dawn. Hmm. Well, sit down, please. And what can I do for you? Actually, it's what I can do for you, Mrs. Dawn. Really? <laughs> You know, during the time I worked for you, I was always treated most kindly. And I said to myself, if ever I should get the chance to repay that kindness, I would. And now you want to do something for me. <laughs> well, when I tell you this, it may not seem like a friendly act, but I do think it's in your best interest that you know. You know what? <sighs> it's about your husband, Mrs. Dawn. I think you should know the truth. Something tells me I don't want to hear this. He's been unfaithful to you, Mrs. Dawn. And how on earth would you know that? Well, I must ask you to trust me as one friend to oh, another. He's been on. seeing a woman called Raven Jameson. The wife of the district attorney? Yes, that's her. They've been having an affair for quite some time now. Listen here, Sarah, I don't know where you get your gutter gossip from, but I cannot believe that. Well, you don't have to take my word for it, Mrs. Dawn. You can ask the district attorney himself. Logan knows about this? Oh, well, it's over now because he found out. Uh, in fact, Mr. and Mrs. Swift have parted. Mrs. Swift has gone abroad. How on earth do you know this? Ah, uh, uh, you can ask Logan Swift, Mrs. Dawn, or your husband. When I get through here, I'm going to go up and see how Calvin looks behind his new desk. He certainly has moved up in the world, hasn't he? Oh, yeah, all the way to Chief Marceau's office. Can you believe it? Calvin Stoner, the new deputy chief. Which makes him acting chief of police while Bill Marceau is on vacation. Yeah, how about that? How about that? <clears throat> well, well, well. Thomas Wolf was wrong. You can go home again. Cliff, what happened to your face? Oh, I, I ran into a door. <sighs> It was held by some girlfriend of mine. <laughs> well, here's looking at you, sweetheart. Cliff, what are you doing here? Well, I came to welcome Steve back to his office. Oh, really? Since when have you been a big fan of mine, Cliff? Ever since you left. Well, I mean, uh, you know, the arrests have been going down around here, and uh, now that you're back there on the streets, uh, pointing those crooks, the uh, rate of convictions will go up for me. It'd be nice having you working again, Cliff. Well, we are a team, you know. Mm -hmm. You're the law, I'm the order. We ought to go arm in arm. So, well, I was wondering if there'd be some cute, short-haired detective around here who uh, wouldn't mind accompanying some dashing assistant district attorney to dinner. Oh, thanks, sweetheart. But I have uh, just gone on duty. Take a rain check. 
<laughs> I was speaking to Scarlett. Oh, I'm sorry, baby face. I also have a date. Steve's working, and you're not going out with me tonight. Going out with that older man again? Too bad you're busy tonight. I was going to take you to Fisherman's Net. Maybe some other time, Cliff. Well, you seem to be having such a wonderful time when I saw you there the other night. What? What are you doing, Cliff? Spying on me? Well, spying is for cops. I was there having a drink. And I noticed this uh, cute redhead in the back booth. That was you, wasn't it? It was me. That gray-haired old man opposite you was uh, Paige Madison's daddy, huh? Owen. So I was having dinner with Owen. Big deal. Some dinner must be tough with your fork to your face when you're holding someone's hand. So I naturally assume that since you were busy tonight, you're going out with that older man, Owen. It is not your right to assume anything, Cliff. Well, I'm getting a bit defensive, aren't we? How I choose to occupy myself and with whom are none of your business. I have things to do. If you'll excuse me, Mr. Nelson. See you later, Steve. <laughs> yeah, well, have a nice night. I never thought I'd see a time when youth would lose out to old age, but here it is. Hey, what are you doing? The hat. Cliff, you really think she's dating Owen Madison? The butter wasn't the only thing melting at that seafood place. And with me around, what is she saying here? Gee, Owen Madison, number one. Oh, wait a minute. Owen Madison happens to be a married man. That doesn't seem to bother Miss Scarlet none. He's got a movie star waiting for him at home. Well, aren't you jealous? No, why should I be? Because for the past year and a half, you've been chasing Scarlet. Hey, Cliff. My relationship with Deborah happens to be none of your damn business. Well, all you got now is just memories. The reason Deborah has been dining out with Owen Madison is so they can discuss Paige's problems outside the Madison house. Are you living in some sort of time warp, dum-dum? This um, dinner was after Paige Madison's case was closed. Besides, holding hand is not in the police manual. Yeah, well, she's old enough. She can do what she wants, when she wants, any time she wants. But why would she go out with the man old enough to be her... Of course, that's had a traumatic experience in her childhood. Our Scarlet must have a father fixation. Tell me something, Cliff. What do you do in your spare time? Study psychology? Some of us read. Books without pictures, too. I had this chick who gave me this self-help book on psychology. Really? She must have known you could use all the help you could get. Yeah. No! Hey, look, we all know how close Scarlet was to her old man, right? You're talking through your hat, Cliff. Hey, don't knock it. I thought she had a father fixation, so that's why I bought this. If I would make me look older, I figured she wanted someone to look distinguished. I didn't know she wanted someone to look ancient. Owen Madison is not that old, and he happens to be a pretty nice guy. Hey, you think it would help if I had gray hair? Yeah? Just comb it right down in front of your face. Look, Doc, do me a favor. Go make a house call somewhere. I got work to do. I got appointments to see, and I have a new deputy chief I have to go visit. Bye. I want you to know that what you did last night was just plain stupid. Oh, thanks for the constructive criticism, Brian. I'm planning on running away, weren't you? I'm oh, just continuing a Madison family tradition. It's bad enough you were even going to see Tobias Page, but you were planning on leaving with him. You were going to run away together. Well, I wasn't going to come back here. Brian, he was the only person I knew that I could trust. And all along, you kept insisting that you had no romantic feelings for him. Don't you see, Brian? I, my life here was shattered. I couldn't come back here, so running off with Toby seemed like the only thing to do. As it turns out, he had no intention of providing you with any kind of future, did he? Well, we were halfway out the door before the case burst open, and I saw the million dollars in cash. Yeah, the payoff from the so-called charitable gun-running scheme. Brian, when I found out that Toby had lied to me, that there was a payoff, well, you know what happened. You know, Paige, you seem to have a knack for getting involved with men who deceive you. Brian, when you, when you told me about us, about us being brother and sister, I mean, I was, I was stunned and I ran, just like you did, when you found out three years ago. I, I couldn't hide the truth from you any longer, Paige. Believe me, I know the hell it is to find out that someone you care about, someone you thought was only related to you by marriage, turns out to be a flesh and blood relation. You and Daddy and Nola had no right to lie to me. No one meant to cause you any pain. Oh, 
I wish Steve hadn't bothered to rescue me, that Toby just put an end to all this misery. Paige, I don't want you to talk like that. Now, we're just going to have to learn how to deal with the situation. Oh, Brian, I don't know if I can deal with it. How am I supposed to stop these feelings that I've had for you since I was a little girl? It's something that has to be done. Brian, you were the best big brother a girl could ask for. I have to convince myself now that that's all you'll ever be? God, I wish I could tell you how I made the adjustment, Paige, but it's something that I'm still working on myself. It's just not fair. You know, our lives were a lot less complicated before I came back. But maybe it's time that, that I went away again, huh? This time for good. No, don't say that, Look, Brian. Look, seeing you every day is only going to make life that much more difficult. I can't handle this by myself. Look, maybe, uh, since we both share the same problem, maybe we can both come to a solution. Oh, God. I don't know if it's going to be that simple. Well, maybe, uh, who knows, with a little bit of luck. We'll both meet somebody we can care about. And that will be the answer to the problem. When Hester transforms herself into a witch, she's going to be doing some pretty rotten things. Now, we'd like to, to fortify that idea by making her as unattractive as possible. Uh, this is the first time we see Hester's physical transformation, isn't it? After her incantation on page 38? Yeah, that, that's when she realizes that if she's going to cast spells, she's going to have to look like an old crone. Is the audience going to buy that? Are you kidding? They'll love it. Look, the first time they see you turn around and think that they're going to see the elegant Hester Atherton and see an old hag instead, it's going to scare them out of their seats. Yeah, well, uh, not a Halloween witch, I hope, with a long nose and, and warts and pointy hat. Well, we don't want to camp this up, Nola, but there's got to be a distinct difference in appearance. Uh, well, do you think we'll get more shock value by showing her changed all at once or, or, or doing the time-lapse thing, letting the audience see the transformation? Well, that's up to the director, but if we go into time-lapse photography, it's going to cost extra. Uh, elegant lady to witch. You know, I'd really like to do my own makeup. Do it myself. You always did have a flair for the grease paint. Uh, it won't be easy, of course. I mean, making myself up to look the part of an elegant lady. Oh, please, don't talk like that, no. Oh, well, let's face it, Eddie. You must have been doing a little bit of typecasting when you thought of me for this role. I thought of this as a role that only an excellent actress could handle and that only a beautiful woman wouldn't be afraid to play. Spoken like a true press agent. That wasn't a press agent. That was me, Eddie Vaughn. Remember me, Nola? Anyway, you're a dear man for bringing Owen this project. No matter how much he protests, I haven't seen him so happy in years. Well, I didn't do it for Owen. I mean, I, I did it for all of us. I, we're picture people, and picture people should be making motion pictures. And I'm going to make the most of it, Eddie. I promise you that. I'm sure you are. I haven't touched a drop, you know. Not since Owen said we would do this movie. I haven't even wanted a drink. <laughs> well, at least not most of the time. I'm really very happy to hear that. I can't afford to start that downhill slide again, Eddie. I just can't. I'm not sure if I'd be able to stop myself from going all the way down. You're not going any place but up. And this picture is going to make all the difference. I don't know if it's going to make the difference to Owen. I've practically lost him, you know. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> well, I think you know what's going on, Eddie. Oh, you're, you're worrying about nothing, nothing at all. <laughs> Owen isn't married to Nola Patterson movie star anymore. Just a, an unreasonable facsimile, preserved in alcohol. He didn't marry your image, Nola. He married you. The years have been very kind, oh, and he could pick and choose among a bevy of young starlets. That's not Owen's style, and you know it. Owen Madison is one of the most loyal people on this earth. And what he's doing in this crazy business, I'll never know. I don't want his loyalty. I don't want Owen to feel as if he's chained to my side because of a marriage certificate. I want his love. Oh, why all these sudden doubts? No woman can see the signs. How did we get out of this topic? 
Look, can we get back to the script? That's an idea. Maybe old Hester has some spell I can use to keep on. Oh, I'll get it. Hello. I'd like to speak to Owen Madison. Uh, Mr. Madison isn't available at the moment. Perhaps I can help you. Yeah, well, who are you? Are you connected with this uh, production? Uh, slightly, yes. And uh, 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 who are you, may I ask? Uh, this is Trent Archer speaking. Uh, do, do you want me to spell it? Or maybe by chance you uh, happen, to, happen to know who I am? Uh, Mr. Archer, hello. Uh, Nola Madison here. Nola who? A thousand, a thousand apologies, Miss Patterson. Yes, well, I thought uh, well, it sounded as though it was the housekeeper or something. Oh, really? Uh, uh, where are you calling from, Mr. Archer? I just arrived at the airport. Oh, my. Well, uh, uh, why don't you come right on over to our house? Uh, you have the address, haven't you? Mr. Vaughn and I are just going over the script. Maybe you'd like to put in your two cents worth. Yes, uh, about the script. Yes, uh, yes, uh, I've got to talk to somebody. I, well, unfortunately, I seem to find myself without any means of transportation. Oh, well, I believe there's a taxi stand right outside the terminal. Well, I assume there'd be a limousine. A limousine. Oh, yeah, the limousine, yes. Uh, oh, uh, hold on just a moment. I've heard that this guy expects the star treatment everywhere he goes, so I'll pick him up. Your driver will be right there, Mr. Archer. Um, what shall I tell him you're wearing so he'll recognize you? Well, I have uh, been in seven major motion pictures in the last three years. So unless he has been living in a cave, I don't think he'll have any trouble spotting me. Right. I'll tell him it's someone who looks familiar. Uh, see you soon, Mr. Archer. He said he's been in seven major movies in the past three years. <laughs> Who's he kidding? <laughs> he hasn't worked since that spaghetti western in 77. But we can afford him. <laughs> I'll uh, see you later, Hester. Oh, uh, don't take anything but uh, wooden broomsticks. Oh, uh, your telephone light's still on. Oh, uh, it's the other line. Date at Ricardo's. Is eight o'clock too early? Oh no, that's fine. I'll meet you there. Good. Really looking forward to seeing you again, Deborah. You know, I never really appreciated how much responsibility the chief has until now. Calvin, you're not thinking about going in administration, are you? Nah, the action's on the street. Oh, good. I'm glad to have my old partner back again. Yeah, with me, you, and Deborah preserving law and order, the forces of evil won't have a chance. Yeah, the three musketeers have been reunited, sort of. Yep, just like old times. Once I, uh, get back on my feet <clears throat> and get out from behind his desk. Come on, vamos. Yeah, well, it'll never be the same, exactly. I guess things never stay the same. Well, it'll be close enough. Yeah, now, that's the trouble, Calvin. Deborah and I, uh, hey, we used to be a lot closer, you know? Hey, come on, you're gonna have to give her a chance, man. You know, I mean, you were just, you were just crowding her, and she didn't like it. She needs some room. Yeah, well, her social calendar seems to be very crowded. It's bursting at the seams. You gotta be kidding. You know, she only goes out with Cliff Nelson for comic relief. Calvin, do you think that, well, you know Deborah's seeing Owen Madison? I know they're spending some time together. Yeah, well, Cliff seems to think that they're having... Having a thing. Hey, come on, don't listen to Cliffy, boy. You know, Deborah was assigned to Owen's daughter's case. You know that. And you think it's strictly business? Well, she never said anything to me about it. I didn't really think it was my place to ask. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, of course. Now, once she's off duty, her life is her own. Yeah. <laughs> Look, um, this guy Madison, he's a hotshot movie producer, right? Maybe she's just trying to get discovered and become a star. Hmm. I wonder just how interested Owen is in finding a new leading lady. That's not the point. Until now, I've been able to justify our being together because we've had official business to discuss. That's not the case tonight. No. As far as the department's concerned, the Paige Madison case is closed. Such a relief to know that Paige's problems are over with. That's bringing up another problem for me. Oh? 
Owen, there's absolutely no way I can fool myself into thinking the reason we're here tonight is anything but social. At least we're being honest with each other. Mm -hmm. Does that bother you? Oh, no. You know what's bothering me. What, that I'm older? No, I think as long as two people can relate to each other, age doesn't make a bit of difference. Well, that's a relief. I'm not that old, you know. <laughs> I feel uncomfortable because I'm dating a married man, Owen. And that is what you are. Come on, Deborah. I told you what kind of marriage no one I have. I always told myself I was going to be the kind of woman who would never get involved with another woman's husband. Look, it's a marriage just devoid of feelings. Certainly the kind of feelings that marriages are based on. Oh, and I'm just confused. Well, I guess it's something that I'm going to have to work out for myself. I can't tell you how wonderful it is to see you again. I'm flattered you feel that way. I hope it's mutual. That you're not just giving in to an aging movie producer. <laughs> you should know me better than that. A little attack of insecurity. But I do want you to feel something for me, Deborah. As much as I don't want to, I do. Why else would I be here? Oh, good heavens! No, what happened? Uh, uh, just a little accident, that's all. Uh, no harm done. You all right? Uh, yeah, I'm fine. I just dropped my drink. Uh, mineral water, darling. Uh, good, that 12-year-old uh, scotch can really stain a carpet. I don't know what happened. I... My mind must have been drifting, and uh, the glass just dropped out of my hand. Oh, my mind is slipping. <laughs> Nola Patterson, meet your leading man, Trent Archer. Does your husband care about bathroom tissue? He's not particular. Wait till he tries White Cloud. It's so much softer, your husband will care. Diane, look. Who is that? Who's He's comparing White Cloud to your brand. <laughs> the one on the left is softer. Turn it upside down and tell me what it says. White Cloud. I really didn't think he would know the difference at all. <laughs> is softness important? Yes, it is. So what are you going to tell your wife? Uh, try White Cloud. Your husband just picked White Cloud as softer than your brand. How soft do you think White Cloud is? White Cloud must be quite a bit softer than the one he was, ex was he The one he was using was your brand. I'll be. So what are you going to do? I guess I'll start buying White Cloud. I have to start buying White Cloud. Why? If it is the softest thing on the market, and if he can tell the difference, mm -hmm. which I really did not think he would be able to, then White Cloud would be what I would want to use for my family. Your family cares. Shouldn't you care to buy the softest White Cloud? I explained to Trent about the limo that we were expecting him on a later plane. Well, the important thing is that you're here, Mr. Archer. Call me Trent, all my friends do. Ah, uh, only if you call me Nola. Oh, I am so honored to be, be working with a, one of the legends of the film business. Uh, uh, people don't usually become legends until they're dead and buried. Uh, there's still quite a bit of life left in me. <laughs> <laughs> I have to hand it to Owen. Having you in the part of Nicholas Harriman is a stroke of, of casting genius. Yes, the role is a bit different. Well, a lot of my fans, uh, they, wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't see me that way, right? Hey, usually you're the lover, right? <laughs> yes, and a very convincing one, too. Oh. Well, uh, my agent thought it was a good opportunity for my uh, versatility, you know. I mean, I'm, I mean I'm, not, uh, I'm not really getting a fee, so it's all right. Well, you see, we decided that this didn't need to be a big budget production. Uh. The excitement of this film is going to come from the performances of two of the finest talents in the business. Oh, I think you're going to be a marvelous devil, Mr. Archer. Uh, uh, Trent, <laughs> you're so devilishly handsome. Well, it's a part I've never tried, Mephistopheles. And I've never played Faust. 
Or rather, Lady uh, Faust. Uh, you have uh, read the script, haven't you, Trent? Oh, yes, I have, yes. I, uh, I have a few suggestions. I, uh, I took a few notes on the plane. Oh, yes, yeah, sure, I, uh, great. I'm sure that, uh, Owen will appreciate these. Well, now, one thing, uh, I, uh, I don't think that there's so much need for all the, the spells, the incantations. I mean, they, uh, they all sound a bit ludicrous to me. But, uh... The spells are very important. They give Hester her power. Yes, but they can be toned down a little. Well, you know, uh, none of this was made up, Trent. Uh, the guy who wrote this screenplay, he got that all from a, from a, uh, an authenticated manuscript. Yes, Hester Atherton was a real person, you see. A real witch? Yes. And I think it's marvelous that the spells are all genuine, don't you? <laughs> Great publicity gimmick, right? I don't believe in fooling with this sort of thing. I think it's foolish and unhealthy. It's dramatic, Doc. Some for me and some for you. Oh, you're not good. Oh, I think I heard a car. That means then you could stay up and play for a little while, has that? Oh, here he is. Here he is. Hello. Hello. I was just telling Jamie how lucky he is. I was just about to put him up to bed. Off you know. But now that you're home, you can play with him for a little while. Oh, April, Has if the kid's sleepy, let him go to sleep. Oh, he's not that sleepy. He took a nap this afternoon. So did I. I'm not surprised. You were up half the night. Oh, come on. Oh, April, half a bad. dozen times you got up because you thought you heard Jamie. Well, now I feel fine. As a matter of fact, I feel wonderful. Here's what I did this afternoon. I took Jamie's playpen outside and filled it up with all his toys, and then I took a nap in the hammock. It's almost as if he knew I needed a little rest. Well, why don't you return the favor and put him up in his crib? Because I promised him he could play with his new daddy today. Oh, his new... new daddy, for Pete's sake, Oh, come April. on, Draper, you know what I mean. He might as well think of you as his father if he's going to be living here. Come on, he's only seven months old. Do you expect me to teach him how to say, Uncle Draper? I suppose you're calling yourself Mommy. It's only natural. No, April, it? it's not natural. It's neurotic. It's neurotic as hell, April. You're not the boy's mother. Do you understand that? Do you? You're not mommy, and I'm not daddy. Stop this. You're going to upset Jamie. No, April. I'm the one who's upset. Look, I'm sorry if you had a hard day. You bet I had a hard day. Mike told me about your visit. All I could think about all day, April, was you here at home, acting as if everything was decided because Raven gave us one lousy piece of paper. Well, if you'll Suddenly excuse we're... me, I think I've changed my mind. It is time for Jamie yeah, to go Yeah, you put Jamie to bed, April, but we're not going to forget about him. Draper, I haven't forgotten about him for one minute. Come on, baby. You want to go to bed? Well, that was fast. Well, he's not asleep yet. He's just quiet. He happens to be a very good baby, considering the family he came from. Oh, you know, we're just so lucky, April. You know, here we are living in a brand new house, which we can't afford. We're taking care of a brand new baby that doesn't belong to, to us. God knows Draper, it's going to drop from listen. the heavens now. Look, I expected you to come home here tonight with all sorts of arguments. But I'm not going to get excited. And I hope that you at least can discuss this calmly, too. My, I'm glad we're so unemotional this evening. It's got nothing to do with emotions. You happen to be a lawyer, and I thought that you would appreciate the logical approach. <sighs> Draper, look, I know that what Raven did does not make us immediately Jamie's parents. I think for the time being, we should just settle for legal guardianship. Oh, now, first things first, right? That's right. And Jamie does come first. That's the way the court would look at it, and I think that's the way we should look at it, too. Well, well why don't you tell me what you think is best for Jamie? Since he doesn't have a mother well, anymore... But he does have a father. Yes, he does have a father. But for all intents and purposes, Logan is now a single man. A single man with a very, very important wait career. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What about your career? I thought you were going to be a television executive or maybe, maybe a, a TV personality. I mean, you interview people so well. My career can wait for a while. 
As of today, I've taken a leave of absence from WMON. You what? That's right. I'm not quitting my job. I'm just taking a leave of absence. Just until Jamie... Until Jamie is older. Until he's, he's married and has kids of his oh, own. Oh, would you stop being so ridiculous? Of course I know mothers have, have children and careers, what too. What about Lo Logan can take care of his own this child? This has nothing to do with Logan April, and you... April, stop this! Now! It's enough! Draper, don't you want a family? Draper, you were the one who talked about adoption. Now we don't have to adopt. We don't have to worry about where the, where the child came from, who his parents are. We have a child. A child that we know. A child that I happen to already love. Draper, please. Please don't do this to me. Look, look at me. We have a baby upstairs. Jamie is ours. He's asleep in our bedroom. He'll be there tomorrow morning. And we can love him, and we can raise him, and just like he was our own son. Please, don't take him away from me, Draper. Not now. Not if... Not if you love me. Don't do this. Logan is strange how responsible I feel for what Raven did. Almost as if she were my own child and I had raised her badly. Oh, Geraldine, you didn't do anything wrong. You just walked in on her at a bad time, that's oh. all. If I could only withdraw the key from that locked door. I gave you that key, remember? I asked you to go by there and check on her health. It's certainly not your fault if by the time you arrived, she'd been cured by Dr. Dorn. Well, I didn't want you to know. I, I saw no point in telling you. You didn't. You didn't tell me anything. I came back because I was concerned about Raven. I thought she was sick. I don't know, maybe I picked up something from your tone of voice, but that's a long way from telling tales. I just wish there had been some other outcome. Not me. Tough as it is, I'd much rather know the truth. And what will you do now? Oh, the best thing. Get out of it. Get out of the marriage as quickly and cleanly as possible. Get custody of Jamie. You don't think there will be any problem there? She abandoned him, practically left him on a doorstep. A familiar doorstep, I grant you that. Yes, but how will you manage? I mean, without a wife, without someone to take care of Jamie? I haven't thought that far ahead. There are ways. Uh, you mean hiring someone? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Like Mrs. Harris, yeah. who never seems to get off the phone long enough with her own children to take care of Jamie? Well, if not Mrs. Harris, and somebody else. Oh, I see. A long parade of paid mothers. Well, what happens when you have to travel? And you will in your job, you know. And all the late nights you spend working? Just to cross that bridge when we come to it. You got a suggestion? <clears throat> uh, well, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, yes, but I... I just don't know how it will strike you. Well, let's find out. Strike ahead. <laughs> it, it has occurred to me that you might be willing to... Um, combine forces. Do what? Well, I realize that you and I are a rather strangely matched pair, but then odd couples are rather common these days, aren't they? And we do have some things in common, you know. I mean, we're both victims in our own ways. Victims trying to hang on as survivors. Geraldine, are you su <sighs> I don't know how to put this delicately. Are you suggesting that we combine households? <laughs> well, certainly I realize you don't need a mother at this stage in your life. But after all, I have been a grandmother to Jamie ever since he was born, and so far I haven't had any complaints from him. <laughs> Logan. Don't worry about hurting my feelings if you say no. no. I realize that I have become more and more superfluous as my life goes on. <laughs> Somehow I have been the residue of so many broken homes and broken marriages and death. Two husbands, two sons of my own. And then there was Kevin. He was my son too, you know. I mean, I made him my son. And when Kevin married Raven, he started a chain of events that led right to this moment, this room, this conversation. A tired old woman and a sad young man. <laughs> no, Logan, I couldn't blame you for not wanting to put that combination together. Oh, no, I didn't say it was a bad idea. It's... 
Well, you know, I, I thought maybe I could be helpful in some way, maybe, maybe even useful. <laughs> I, I don't know, somehow I just I can't see you as Jamie's permanent babysitter. Oh, well, I'm not applying for that job. <laughs> no. I'm applying for the job in a family. For you and Jamie. And me. so desperate. Oh, I thought you looked a little sad. But I can guess what's on your mind. It's your daughter, isn't it? No, oh, as a matter of fact, I wasn't thinking about April just now. I was thinking about you. Oh, I'm flattered. I don't think you would be if you could read my mind. Uh oh, am I beginning to alarm me? Have I been uh, neglecting you lately again? Tell me where I've uh, done wrong. Matter of fact, that is precisely what someone else told me earlier today. Someone? Mm -hmm. Who? Oh, someone we both know very well. Someone who used to work right here, as a matter of fact. You don't mean Sarah Albright? Ah, precisely. Dear Sarah, dropped by, out of the kindness of her heart, to tell me a few things she thought I ought to know about you. Something tells me you know exactly how the conversation went. I can't imagine. Oh, can't you? Well, Sarah Albright is a dangerous, demented woman. I was afraid she was going to pull a shabby trick like this. I was going to warn you about this a long, long time ago. Listen, uh, I might as well tell you the truth. Sarah didn't resign. I fired her. Or rather, I forced her to leave uh, by threatening to reveal what she was doing, even to the extent of calling the police. The police? The woman was a petty thief, Margot. Oh. I caught her at it. That's why she's doing this. That's why she's going around saying that we had an affair behind your back. <laughs> she didn't say any such thing. Oh? She didn't say anything about the two of you. She said something entirely different. Yeah, of course, but I was just uh, using this as an example. That's the kind of thing she would say. I mean, that's the kind of thing It doesn't that... matter. I told her I wasn't interested in her gutter gossip. You did? Oh, it wasn't very pleasant hearing what she had to say, but then it could have been false. Or it could have been the absolute truth. I like Marco, L please. Let me finish, please. It could have been the absolute truth. But I told her I didn't want to hear about it. I told her that it wasn't any of her business, just as I said it wasn't any of my business. Oh. Now, don't misunderstand. I was very hurt by what she said, more hurt than I thought I could be. But I was also protected by a certain decision that I'd made a long, long time ago. Do you have any idea what I'm talking about? Look, Margot, I, I swear to you. I have never been unfaithful to you. Never. Look, I know there have been stories, people always telling stories about other people, you know that. But you're the only woman I care about. Do you believe me? Do you expect me to? I want you to. <sighs> oh, well, that's different. <laughs> Not that the different matters. Because the decision that I was talking about is the decision to make this marriage work, to believe that this marriage is as good as I can possibly expect it to be. Margo, you're an no, angel. No, Elliot, please. Don't touch me right now. I don't think I want to be touched right now. 
Margot. And let's not talk about it anymore, either. Do you understand? I don't want to have to talk about it anymore. Believe me, my angel, you won't, you won't have to talk about this again. Ever? I don't want to do anything to lose you. I need you. Very much. We'll dress for dinner. Doctors ever take their own advice? I take my own advice all the time. I tell all my patients to come home to a beautiful wife. How's your day? Oh, it's a dumb question. Half of it's still ahead of you, isn't it? Oh, uh, well, one special thing did happen this afternoon. I heard a very interesting story. Huh. Margot might be at the studio tonight. I should ask her about it. What was it? April is leaving WMON. Are you kidding? She wouldn't do that for all the tea in China. Well, I don't know. Then she's uh, taking a leave of absence. Len told me about it. I tried to reach her this afternoon at home. She must have been shopping or something. That's got to be some kind of a false rumor. Let's face it, Margot would never leave. You know, that job is too good a way of keeping the apron strings tied. <laughs> well, that's what I thought, but Glenn seemed pretty sure about it. Said April was talking to him about him taking on some of her work. Oh, good. Company. We eating in? Yes. Okay. Well, we were just talking about you. Oh, though my ears are burning. Mm, glad to see you home. Oh, I'm right. glad to see you. I think I could have waited mm. until tonight to find out what's going on. Yeah. Is Draper with you? Oh, uh, no, he's uh, at home with Jamie. You still have that baby with you? Yeah, as a matter of fact, we might uh, have him for quite some time. Ah, uh, well, then that explains the rumor. You're just taking some extra days for babysitting. Yeah, Nicole had heard that you were planning to leave the station. Neither one of us could understand why. Well, that's why I'm here, to tell you all about it. Um... Logan and Raven have split up for good. She has taken off for England and said that she would probably never, ever return. Well, it's Raven. I'm not surprised. Yeah, but that's not all. She left her baby with us, and I don't just mean to babysit. I mean to keep, to take care of and treat as our own son and to adopt if we want to. I can't believe that Raven would do something like... It's true. Like... It's true. She left papers, legal papers, papers giving us permission to care for Jamie and even uh, adoption consent forms in case we want to adopt him. Well, look, it, it makes sense to me. Raven knows that we love Jamie and we're both young. And we've got a beautiful new home. I can't have any children of my own and Logan is not Jamie's legal parent. Look, even if he was, he, he's in no position right now to make a well, home for Jamie. Slow down a little bit. You're going 60 miles an hour, and I think you're off the track a bit. Look, would I... I'd really like you to help me make Draper understand. Like said, if we went to court, they would choose in favor of the baby, whatever's best for the baby. And don't you think that staying with us is the absolute best for Jamie? I don't know, April. I've... Never heard of anything like this happening well, before. Well, look, I'm upset. I'm worried about Draper. He was extremely unreasonable tonight. He acted as if, as, as if I were committing some sort of a crime. When all I want to do is raise and, and love a, a little baby boy. Nicole, you've got to understand. I mean, I mean, you've got a little boy of your own. What if we were talking about Adam? What if we were talking about Adam and it was Miles who was giving you a hard well, time about... Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. You leave me out of this. this the situation's not the same. Look, I, uh, I really don't have any time to argue. I just... I just wanted to come by and tell you what was happening because I'm sure that Draper is going to call you and try to enlist your help in making me reasonable, you see. But being reasonable is not such a bad idea. No, but being happy is a lot better idea, Miles. April. What's the matter? You forget your key? Good evening. Swifty, what are you doing here? Come on in. I thought the sooner the three of us got this thing settled, the better off we'd be. Why? The only problem is April's not here. Well... Maybe that's for the best. I really need to get this off my chest anyway. Would you sit down and let me talk at you for a while? I told you I would tell you about the breakup eventually. You know, why it happened, if you haven't already guessed. 
I should have. I should have figured it out a lot sooner than I did. After all, I had the example of the way Raven carried on with me when she was married to Kevin. Husband didn't mean very much to Raven, I don't think. He was just a conquest, past history, and boring. Needed new worlds to conquer. Well, I guess I don't have to draw your picture anyway. When I found out the truth, when I walked in on the truth, there wasn't much left for Raven to do except throw a fit, which she did. As soon as she found out she couldn't manipulate me the way she did Kevin. I think that's what really got to her, you know? So she did the only thing that she was sure would hurt me. She took my son away from me, and he's my son. I know he's your son, Logan. I only have one question. I mean, Jamie's a, a tiny baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you going to take care of him? I've already made arrangements for that. Geraldine's going to take charge. We're combining forces. Uh, so, <laughs> whatever forces we have. I don't know how it's going to work out. I don't know much about the future at all. I just know I want my son. in the car? Oh, no. Oh, um, they didn't have anything I wanted. Uh, I just decided we'd have some leftovers, something that I'm going to check Jamie before No, wait, I'm April, don't go upstairs. It's not here. Where is he? With his father. With his father? What's that supposed to mean? It means that Logan came by when you were gone. And he wanted his baby, so I gave him to him. So you just gave it to him? Just like that, huh? Why? You had no right to it. You had absolutely no right. How could you do it to me? <laughs> You would let Jenny fix you something to eat, darling. I think you'd feel better if you ate oh, something. Oh, Margot, I can't even think of food. <sighs> I wish I could stay around and see that you did eat, but I have a breakfast meeting at the Madisons. Are you going over to the Madisons? Yeah. Well, you know Owen's an old friend of mine. You know, he's producing a movie right here in Monticello. I thought I'd give him a little free publicity on WMON. I mean, it is a newsworthy event. It's the first feature of a film here. Oh, oh darling, please. I'm sorry. I'm really not much of a conversationalist this morning. Look, maybe you, maybe you just better get going. I just hate leaving. You're feeling so ill and, and looking so down. I just can't believe Draper didn't call. I mean, he didn't even call here to see if, see if I was here. Oh, well, uh, Draper did call last night, darling. He did? Yes, as a matter of fact, he, he came by to try to talk to you, but, oh, well, sweetheart, you'd fallen asleep, and I wouldn't let him disturb you. I, I hope I did the right thing. Well, I don't know. I, I guess so, uh... I don't even know what I would have said to him. We probably just would have had another argument. Right. Um, by the way, hmm? Margot, what time does uh, Elliot... Oh, don't worry about him. He usually sleeps until lunchtime. What I'm really worried about is getting you some breakfast. Good morning. Draper, still not bothering to have yourself announced, I know. I'm please. family, Margot. Oscar doesn't announce family. Good morning, honey. Draper, really. April is not feeling well. I don't think she's up to talk. Please to shut thing. up, Margot. Beg your pardon. Well, what about it? Are you going to talk to me or aren't you? Mrs. Dorn. Oh, yes. I would like to have a little word with you. 
From now on, I don't want anyone allowed up to my apartment unless they are announced. Do you understand? But, Mrs. Dorn, you told me. I, I mean, you said there wasn't any need to call up about family. Well, the need has suddenly arisen. From now on, no one, no one except my daughter, my husband, or myself is to be allowed in that elevator without first being announced, all right? Well, yes, ma'am, of course, but... Uh... The maid, now. Oh, for heaven's sake. The maid comes to the basement service elevator. Of course, I don't mean her. I mean anyone that you let into that elevator. You know, if you'd been just a little bit more careful, maybe I wouldn't have been burglarized. But that wasn't my fault, Mrs. Dorn. Oh, come on, Oscar. You're not always here when you're needed, you know. Well, I'm only human, Mrs. Dorn. Can't always be here. I, I told the building management to put two men on the job, but they won't do it. Besides, you, you were robbed at night, weren't you? And the elevator door is always locked when I'm not here. Oh, well, that elevator door was not locked that night. Otherwise, how could two people get on it, go to my apartment, and take whatever they please? You know what I want you to do from now on? I want you to see that that elevator is locked whenever you leave your station, even for two seconds. Well, yes, ma'am, of course. Anything you say. Well, that's what I say. <laughs> Rich women. <laughs> You know, I think Margot deliberately tried to keep me from seeing you last night. I think she's so glad to have her daughter back here at Draper, home. Draper, if by you her... came over here to complain about Margot, maybe no, we should just... No, if I came here to talk some sense into you. No, I know how difficult it must have been for you to come home last night and discover that the baby wasn't there. You might even think me callous for giving the baby back, but that... Good word, callous. I'm glad you said it There's first. another word, though. Fair. Isn't it fair that Logan has his baby back? As far as you're not being there, yeah, you know as well as I do, you would have kicked and screamed and carried on before you agreed to do what I you're did. You're damn right I would have done that because, Draper Scott, you were not fair. You weren't fair to me. And I am your wife, you know that? Logan Swift may be your best friend, but I am your wife. If it means that much to you, why did you walk out on me? Why did you leave me without discussing this? Now, that hurt me, April. It hurt me a lot. Oh, God. If you could have just seen Logan's face. And you know why Raven did this. She did it to hurt Logan. But didn't I have anything to say about it? Couldn't you have waited for me to come home? I mean, did you have to... Did you have to sneak Jamie out of the crib like he was some kind of a piece of stolen merchandise? Yeah, I thought about that. And then I thought about the anguish it was going to cause the three of us. No, the four of us, April. Don't you think Jamie would have suffered in an emotional tug of war between people who are supposed to care about I see, one another? You see, you're, you're thinking about Jamie now. Tell me, where is he? I told you. He's with his father. Oh. Oh, I understand. Um, Logan Swift resigns as district attorney in order to take care of little babies. No, no. No! He's, he's been thrown with some stupid babysitter, hasn't he's he? He's with Geraldine Saxon. You could hardly describe her that way. She and Logan are going to take a place together. She's going to look after Jamie full time. I think that's wonderful. Jamie doesn't get a mother, he gets a grandmother. April, the baby's going to be looked after very well. Isn't that the most baby important thing? Baby needs a mother. Geraldine Saxon is too old to raise a little infant. She doesn't have the patience to raise a child. Well, grandmothers... Grandmothers like the fun of having babies. They, they can't handle the treachery. You're not being fair. If they need nursing help, they'll get it. Oh, that's right. That's because... Geraldine Saxon is so rich. No, it's because Geraldine has taken care of the baby for quite a while. She loves the kid a and lot. so do I, Draper. And that is exactly why what you did was so cruel. Don't you understand? I mean, I feel like I've lost something very important to me. I can understand do that. Do you? Do you really know what it's like? It's almost like it. It's almost like the time I fell down those stairs at Mayfield. And I found out that that I had lost our baby. No, April, no, no. It's not the same thing. Look, get dressed and come back with me. This, is, this isn't the place to discuss this. No. I can't do that right now. I can't go back to that empty house. Not yet. I need some time alone, Draper. Some time alone. 
to think? Yep, I got the confirmation this morning. Jason Reinhardt has agreed to direct Mansion of the Damned. Oh. He'll be starting, uh, be arriving, actually, in a couple of days. And, oh, we do want to thank you for giving Brian a leave of absence so he can work on the movie with his father. Mm -hmm. Oh, not at all. Brian's a very bright young man. I just don't think he's quite found his direction yet. <laughs> he's lucky to have so many opportunities. Well, we're all very grateful to you, Margo, for your help. I'm sure you know that. Well, the question is now, uh, what can we do to help you? Uh, exactly how should we start? Well, I have one little suggestion. I think we should start this movie about the devil with one hell of a party. <laughs> oh, did I say that? <laughs> 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 Oh, really, don't you movie people usually have some sort of a party to celebrate the end of production? Mm -hmm. The uh, wrap party. No, oh, well, we could call this an unwrap party. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. No, really, to celebrate the beginning of the production. It'd be quite an occasion. Uh, it could be a media event. What on earth is a media event? Oh, it's oh. something that happens just so that the press can, can cover it. Exactly. <laughs> we'll give a grand party with all the principals involved, including the stars, of course, to give it that little extra bit of glamour. Oh, oh, it's a marvelous idea. I'm sure everybody would love it. And I'd have the whole mm. thing videotaped. One of the guests could do it. Brian could. How wonderful. <laughs> oh, and we must do this. Now, now, let's just be practical about this. I mean, the set designer's already started. Mm -hmm. Reinhardt's going to be arriving the day after tomorrow. We're soon to begin script rehearsal. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, production's already started. Yes, but we haven't started shooting anything yet. That's the important thing. Mm. I agree with the ladies. I think it's a hell of an idea. Oh, well, we'll have to start very soon, though, won't we? And, oh, dear, we haven't got the proper help. Our new maid isn't starting until this afternoon. Oh, come on, mm. I wasn't suggesting well. you have the party here. I mean, after all, it's my idea. It really ought to be my part. Hmm? Oh, Margo. <laughs> no, absolutely well, that's not. That's beyond no. the call of duty, Mrs. Dorn. Oh, nonsense. I've been looking for a good excuse to give a grand old party. I haven't had a chance to give one since I announced my marriage. Oh, I just want to give the Mansion of the Dam the proper send-off. Well, I don't know. You certainly have a place for a party. She's got this penthouse, Eddie. I'll tell oh, you. It's really not all that great. No, I'd like you all to come up, though. We could go over all the details. We could discuss the guest list. Oh, you know, it would be a super idea. Well, we could have it a theme party based on the spirit of the movie. Oh, well, I'd be a little careful of that if I were you. The theme of this movie seems to be nothing but one curse after another. Oh, really? <laughs> no, it's just dramatizing. Oh. <laughs> well, we, we do have a poster that we've been working on. Of course, it isn't finished yet. Just some rough sketches. Do you suppose but... I could look at it? Maybe give you Sure, of course you could. Come with mm -hmm. me. You'll excuse us, won't you? Oh, yes, Certainly. of course. Excuse us. Won't be too long, though. No, we won't. <laughs> I wonder if we could uh, kind of decorate the apartment around the well, your friend, Mrs. Dorn, is uh, really very nice, Owen. Well, I told you that before, didn't I? And uh, quite a businesswoman, I understand. Is she the one you had your business dinner with last night? Margo? Oh, hmm? no. Hmm. You know, you haven't told me a thing about it. What did you discuss? Oh, no, just a thousand and one details that wouldn't interest you. Well, why don't you try me and see? Uh. I was wonder what time Trent Archer is planning on getting out of bed. It was his idea to have a morning meeting. If he doesn't turn up pretty soon, the morning's going to be over. Owen, who was your dinner partner last night? It was an officer, bank officer, trying to finance this movie using stocks as collateral. A bank officer. Uh, Saxon? Yes. Is it for you? Ooh. Thank you. Can you sign this, please? Just a second. Here you go. Thank you.
Good morning, Cliff. Hi. You're a sight for sore eyes. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, can I buy breakfast? Well, that's a good idea. Uh, I spent about 20 cents on my eggs, about 50 cents on my toast and coffee. Uh, why don't you just give me a dollar? We'll call it even. I see you've uh, bought breakfast already. Yes, thank uh, you, though. Well, I haven't. Uh, <laughs> any leftovers? No, I don't, Cliff. Only coffee. Guess what I have to do, then. So you are really becoming a household pest. I think I might have to get an exterminator. Come on, you'll be worth it when you hear my news. Oh. Hot off the press. Of course, uh, the press doesn't know about it. Hey, you lied. You have leftovers. Help yourself. What's your news? Well, it's bad. Logan's wife has split. What? Yeah, Raven's flown the coop. Do Ravens have coops? Anyway, she left Logan, she left her little kid, she got on an airplane, she flew to London and says she's never coming back again. My God, that's terrible. I told you it was worth a dollar. I feel so sorry for Logan. Yeah. I never did like Raven very much, you know? Neither did I. But you're glad to hear it then, huh? Well, of course not. Especially because of that poor little baby. What's going to happen to him? I don't know. The boss won't talk about it. Not even to me. You know, if everybody would tell me their troubles, this world would be a better place. Really? Yeah. Mm. Hey, I could smell trouble in that marriage long ago. I can always smell trouble. The eye sees, the ear hears, but the nose knows. Which reminds me, why does this toast smell like roses? How is it uh, going to affect Logan's campaign trip, do you know? Well, that's the trouble. I'm sure Fat Freddy would love to know that his opponent's wife has just run off. <laughs> Hope nobody breaks it to the press. I mean, uh, you know how nosy some people can be. Cliff, give me that. What have Cliff? we here? <clears throat> Love, Owen. Owen Madison sent in your roses, huh? Cliff, give me that or you get What'd out What'd you do to right deserve now. it, huh? Give it to me, Cliff. Look, Scarlet, this is serious now. I mean, what are you doing running around with a man who's old enough to be your father? It is none of your business. And I wish you wouldn't go around telling people about my private life. Me? Yes, you. You told Steve, didn't you? Look, I worry about you, Scarlet. Listen, this man is married. When he's done with you, he goes home to his wife. Look, do I have to remind you that there are plenty of eligible men around? who are a lot younger and much more handsome. Owen Madison is a friend of mine, Cliff, and nothing more. Well, nothing more, friends, don't send long stem roses. He sent them to me out of gratitude. For what? For helping his daughter out of the mess she was in. That's funny. I thought Steve helped his daughter out of the mess he was in. Did he send Steve a dozen roses? Look, Scarlett, we got to talk about this. This is serious. Cliff, would you like some breakfast? Oh, well, that's better. Yeah, you got any eggs? There's a diner at the corner. Get out. here. I know. Well, where is it? With his father. With his father? What's that supposed to mean? It means that Logan came by when you were gone, and he wanted his baby, so I gave him to him. So you just gave it to him? Just like that, huh? Why? You had no right, Drake. You had absolutely no right. How could you do it to me? Transaction than the place where it all began. 
Look, it's simply impossible for you to come to this apartment without my wife knowing all about it. That's why. And what if she does? I'll simply tell Oscar the doorman that I stopped by to pick up some back pay. It won't be that far from the truth, will it? Listen, it would be a great deal easier all around if he came to the unicorn. Then we could go into my private office and take care of all these details. Hmm. I'm sure the details would be much better in your apartment, Elliot, darling. I mean, you remember all the good times we spent together? The good times are over, Sarah. This is strictly business. Yes. And if your wife knew what the business was, she'd really toss you out on your profile, wouldn't she, ducks? Oh, my God. Sarah, is there someone with you? <laughs> no, precious. Surely you don't think I've found someone to replace you. <sighs> no, I'm afraid you've ruined me for all other men, Elliot. I'm simply mad about you, even if you have thrown me over. Anyway, you heard my terms. If you want this transaction to take place, you will have to meet them. Either I come to your place, or it's no go. Well, enjoying yourself? Margaret told me you'd be spending a few days with us, April. But it never occurred to me that you might be spying on me. I wasn't. I uh, just picked up the phone to call Draper. Oh, but you weren't listening to Draper, were you? You were listening to me. Well, that was an accident. <gasps> Are you accident prone, April? Elliot, I had no intention on eavesdropping on your conversation. Believe me, I have no interest in anything you have to say. Oh, no? But you heard what I said. And you heard Sarah. And you didn't put the phone down. You kept right on listening. And I suppose you got the same wrong impression again? No, no, you're wrong, Elliot. I, uh, I didn't get any impression at all. Oh, yes, you did. And you probably can't wait to tell Mommy about it. For your information, I never said to anything to Margot about you and Sarah. Maybe you're thinking of starting now. Maybe I should. Maybe I should go straight to Margot and tell her what I saw that day. Her husband and her maid in her own bed. Margot knows all about it, April. Well, does she? Does she know all about your little transaction, too? You're hysterical, April. God. Margot tells me you've had a traumatic experience. And that happens to be none of your business. You've left your husband, I understand. You must be feeling very depressed about that, April. A young woman in that kind of situation will think anything. Do anything. Won't she? <laughs>